this seventh season as an analyst for the LSU. Every 20 years, I get a chance to say, oh, this has got a chance. Got a chance, yeah. He's in his seventh year as an analyst for the LSU Radio Network, former Tiger Star player for a national championship team in the 2007 season. He played in 40 games over four seasons at LSU after earning All-American honors at West Jefferson High School. Spent time with 10 NFL franchises, star for the Arena League New Orleans Voodoo, and of course LSU now up to 16th in the nation at 5-2, and two, and they're off this week. Tigers play at some place called Tuscaloosa on November the 4th. Please give a warm quarterback club welcome to Marlon Favorite. Big favor. LSU defense was down at the time. That's what happened. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for having the quarterback club. It's always great when I come here. Lots of great faces. I appreciate y'all so much. Um, cool fact, right? So from preschool to first grade, I went to John Curtis. So as a little kid, I had a chance to travel with them on the road. My mom drove the buses for John Curtis. I don't know how I got away, but that's another story. Um, and uh, so, Coach, congratulations, man. Such an honor, a huge blessing uh, for, for which we were able to accomplish. So now it's time to talk about them Tigers, I, I guess. Go ahead and talk about this up and down roller coaster season. And, uh, we, we used to kind of talk to the Tiger like this, but now it's more Coach Brian Kelly and we're going to get this thing together. Go Jade. <laughs> <laughs> so we're switching things up around here. Listen, y'all, <laughs> after 2019, we, we, we seen this team pick up uh, two great quarterbacks in Jaden Daniels and uh, uh, Zach um, Nussmeyer uh, uh, being able to uh, build that room. The young man, Ricky Collins from, from, uh, from Woodline, will have some other guys too. But just to see what Jaden Daniels, y'all, let's stop a second to talk about this kid right now. I think he's seven, uh, second in the Heisman uh, in the Heisman race behind uh, the kid from Washington. And what he was able to do with this team and with his inheritance, just talking a little football here uh, with this young man, our defense had been up to par this year. It's the bottom line. We're getting better now. Uh, obviously, our front seven, we, we made some, some changes. One of the godfathers of the game, my mentor, Coach Pete Jenkins, uh, he, he came in as a, as a defensive analyst to kind of help out with some of those things defensively. So uh, I like the adjustments uh, we have moving forward. Uh, the Ole Miss game, yeah, it was a disaster. But Jaden still scored 49 points and consistently gave us 49 points. Uh, you look at what Joe Burrow had in regards to Justin Jefferson. Uh, uh, excuse me, yeah, yeah, I had it right. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, uh, Terrence Marshall, uh, Moss, uh, Clyde Edwards, and Larry. He had a lot of weapons around him, not taking anything from Joe. 60, 60 touchdowns. Man's gonna have a, a trophy, but what Jaden was in, what is inherited, what he inherited it here at uh, at LSU was a was a subpar defense in the beginning of the season, which we which we've worked on. Uh, Malik Neighbors has been consistent for him uh, and just uh, figuring it out. This young man been doing it with his feet, you know, and and I think it'll be huge, y'all, if in less than three years we have two Heisman winners at LSU. That would be really big for the whole state. Uh, I love what's going on at Tulane right now. Me and uh, my, my uh, co-host Brandon Taylor have been talking about what's going on at Tulane. I'm, I'm extremely proud. For, for a long time, Bonserrata's NFL, I had to hear all the smack from my Florida teammates on the different NFL teams, and now I'm super proud of Louisiana, what we're doing here in the booth, representing, uh, showing, that, showing our worth in sports. Uh, so that's been great. Um, but, but LSU as, as a whole, just, just being able to look at this team this year, it has its ups and its downs, but I, I, I do believe in the hiring Coach Kelly. Um, the way he's able to adapt and adjust, we had an alumni practice, I want to say this was maybe two weeks before the season started, and he spoke to all the alumni and said, all right, y'all, we're going to win everything. Now, any other questions? He's kind of casually said that, but the respect he had for Coach Frank Wilson, he spoke highly about Frank Westbanker from this area and really listens to what Frank says in regards to uh, building this team, you know, you come in, come down here from from Louisiana. I mean, come to Louisiana from other places. It's, a, it's different here. It's a different culture. We don't close deals over in suits and ties. It's over being crawfish, baby. That's how we do it here. And you know, for for him to adapt our culture and you know bring those guys in, I, I think it's cool. So I'm, I'm excited for the rest of the schedule. 
Oh, we needed this bye week, so we're going to get ready for Bama. Bama's starting to pick it up a little bit, uh, but I feel confident uh, that this, this whole team now, see, looking at the bigger picture, we still have a chance at the SEC uh, West. We you know, beat Bama, you know, the dice are rolling in your favor. Um, it, it's still a, it's, it's an interesting season moving forward. It's a lot of hype, the baseball team, that it's a lot of energy. Uh, right now on that campus, that's great. So I think we're turning in the right direction, and I look forward to that big game in Tuscaloosa. So, y'all have any questions? Crickets, crickets, crickets. Yeah. <laughs> Huge impact. Correct. Well, if you guys notice, and I know a couple of our coaches called this, like our D line was playing off the ball. Um, when my company, Conference Sports, we work with a lot of defense alignment locally, and I like to tell my D linemen to play up on the ball unless you're going to run a true two man front. You're going to two gap it. You can play a little bit off, get yourself room for error, but just find that way to utilize Mason Smith, utilize that, the, the rotation, get up on the ball. Most importantly, y'all, Harold Perkins. You know, it, it, just the way we were using him initially, I, I really wasn't feeling it. it just like one, one game, he dropped back in the coverage like 60% of the time. I'm like, that's not that kid's game. I want to say it might have been in that loss against Ole Miss. I don't know. It might have been in that game. We, we didn't use him properly. He's a guy last year. You got y'all saw him. He just he stormed the stage like Honey Badger, like LaRon Landry. I'm talking about. I've seen some guys play some ball, and I think with Coach Pete and his wisdom. Particularly, we've seen a big change in the front seven, so I, I, I think that's cool. Any other questions about the Tigers? I'm sorry, about the Tigers. <laughs> hey, what about the Miss y'all going to do? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm so confident that old Miss is confident right now. Y'all rolling. But I asked you a question about your head coach, you said you wouldn't hire him, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, we, we, we'll, we'll be in something. I'm, I'm telling you, this SEC championship, like said, this is the last year we can do this. Like, once Oklahoma and Texas come in next year, everything is changing. So, <laughs> uh, we had a question out there. What about uh, DBU that we got you said? Ooh, ooh, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> and and uh, Coach JT can probably attest to this. A young man will probably see a lot more as Ashton Stamps out of Rome. I think he's someone, I saw him go one-on-one -on -one with Justin Jefferson this, this summer. He won his fair matches. He's been dealing with a little growing era, uh, uh, issue. Uh, I think Zay is out. Alexander, I think he, he's out with the, with the, with the knee. It's, 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 we're so used to seeing Patrick Peterson, Derry Stingley, we recruit, recruited exceptionally well in that area. And the one, I just said, so many of these quarterback clubs talk about what we're going to do with our quarterback. And now we have three that <laughs> actually play in the area that we, we, we've been great at for a long time. I don't want to really put this on. And we have high school coaches in here right now, so they can attest. And my man Courtney talked about this in terms of how the, the, per, the portal has worked differently now. Um, Deion Sanders took all the DBs now playing. Uh, <laughs> so, so I think he had to mix up with Eli Rich. He hit the portal, and in that area, like after the 2019, we started to struggle to find that that mix. We've been a little inconsistent in finding the right DB, and it all goes back to recruiting. That's what that's the source is is getting. And I think what Nick Saban did exceptionally well, and coach, coach, uh, my high school coaches in here have been around it for a while. Yeah, he came sat in y'all's offices with Odell and, I mean, John Curtis all day. And he made sure he secured the guys here. You want to build from inside that state. It's, it's a sense of pride of playing for LSU, Tulane. Uh, my son's at Northwestern State right now as a starting punter. You know, to keep him in state is cool because I can kind of make that little drive. That lets you play 11 o'clock game, six, pew, hit the road. So it, it's, a, it's a sense of pride for your state. And once we start locking up a lot of these DBs like stamps, and then when we do go outside the state, get them five stars, you know, make it attractive. But I'm going to tell you all right now, it's, <laughs> Texas is going to make it hard in the NIL deal. I mean, they, they spend the money from 1988, man. It's crazy. <laughs> Shoot the long money in that section. <laughs> Any more questions about them? About them tigers, maybe. Any questions? <laughs> y'all have a blessed day. Y'all for having me.